Now, Scylla Black introduces the show guaranteed to bring a smile or a tear. Surprise, surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. Surprise, surprise. Now, before we start tonight's show, there's somebody in the audience I want to have a word with. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, surprise, surprise. It's you, Brian Murphy. <laughs> now, Brian, I'm ever so upset about this because this is your girlfriend, Shelley, sitting next to you. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. And your Shelley writes to me to say that every time Surprise Surprise starts on Friday night, you leap onto your sofa, lie down, and go to Kipper Rooney fast as well. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You see, is that right, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, I'm cut to the quick. In fact, my quick has never been so cut up in my life. <laughs> Shelley, you've tried everything. Yeah, you have, to wake him up. What have you done, Chuck? Throwing cushions at him. Throwing cushions at you, Brian. <laughs> uh, put water on him. Put water on him? And nothing's worked? No. And you're still snoozing away. Mm. Brian, how could you do that to me, sweetheart? Every day. <laughs> Every day. Well, I've got the remedy for you, Brian. I thought you might. <laughs> You'll never guess what I've got for you. No. no. It's a, well, I'll tell you, it's a surprise, surprise, prodder. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> and it's for your Shelley. <laughs> and every, you know, I think you've fallen asleep as we speak, actually. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big one. If you're going to have one, I'm a big one. <laughs> Now, Shelley, a little bit of word of advice during the show. Every time, you know, he starts going away, you know. <laughs> Just give him a little prod like that. Anywhere you like. And if that doesn't work, get him there like that. <laughs> All right, Shelley, yes. so this belongs to you. you. Keep it during the show. And anybody else, if he falls asleep, you will tell me, won't you, gang? Yes! Very much, sweetheart. All right, Brian. Okay. Nobody. No, I'm keeping it there. Oh. At least until I introduce this next item. Because now it's time to find out what our Bob Calgie has been up to. The last I heard, he was trying to enlist the help of a Cape Crusader. <laughs> John Black from Belfast is a serious and respectable financial consultant. That's when he's at work. Away from work, he's Batman. He can only carry his Batman ID card and even change into his Batman T-shirt in the middle of a meal in a posh Chinese restaurant. <laughs> John would do love the opportunity of acting out one of his hero's nation-saving exploits. Right now he's in his office awaiting a client. That client is me. His dynamic partner, Robin. Jumping Jupiter carriages, we're late. <laughs> this is really him, isn't it? John, I'm looking for. John Black. Hi, John. Surprise, surprise. How are you? Hello, uh, thanks. <laughs> You look slightly surprised. <laughs> I'm not here, I'm good. Well, that makes a change, doesn't it? Anyway, we've got a bit of a problem. We need your help. Mm -hmm. You see, John, we need a Batman. <laughs> and it's very, very important that we can have a Batman, that we should have a Batman. And I've heard that you're ideal for the job because you are, in fact, Batman. <laughs> so, Batman, I should have said Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need your help with a very urgent problem. That's right. Is that all right? So you're coming with me right now because Everyone's waiting for you back at the Wayne Mansion. <laughs> On a peaceful Sunday morning, millionaire Bruce Wayne and his youthful ward, Dick Grayson, are relaxing. Suddenly, the telephone rings. 
Yes? Yes? Yes, yes? Yes? Yes, yes? Yes. That was the police commissioner. No. Yes. Not in the yard, need our help. No, no. Yes, yes. Naval villains at large in London. Striking turn to the hearts of the population. Laughter criminal is still in the world's supply of fish fingers. Holy mackerel! <laughs> Who would do such a thing? It's only one evil person enough. Only one evil person enough? <laughs> Personal evil enough. Again, Jones. The penguin. Right first time. This is a job for Batman and Robin. If only they were here. Batman to airport. Red alert. Prepare bat jet for me to take off. Let's go. Never once a show of responsibility. Batman and Robin, warriors against crime, set off once again to do battle against their most dreaded adversary. Last reported scene in London Zoo. The Batmobile Robin. I've got my car. Rowan, there's not a moment to lose. We'll see where this trail leads. All right, Batman. I'm a dead end at this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm calling the fish finger market. I can hold the world to ransom. Eh, 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 eh. But that's only <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> then I'm going to have a whale of a time. But first, I got bigger fish to fry. Eh, 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 eh. Yes, I'm talking about Batman. Eh, 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 eh. If he resists to my bait, I'd have him hook, line, and sinker. Eh, 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 Fish face! Sucker and salmon! Here come the gruesome gruesome now! Not so fast, my fishy friend! Beep, 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 <laughs> it was a good fight, Robin. But we battered him, Batman. <laughs> yes, Commissioner. Not only have we recovered the fish fingers, but we've provided the zoo with a rare specimen. here in the audience, John Black, and it's also our very big thanks to Sylvester McCoy for being a p -p 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 perfect penguin. <laughs> well, now it's time I dialed a few digits, and I'm ringing a Trevor May, who does a bit of ledger germain. In case you don't know what that means, he's a magician. You learn something every day, don't you? And guess how many digits we have this week? Surprise, surprise. It's ten again, yes. <laughs> My goodness me. Here we go. on the other end of the phone. Hello? 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 <laughs> Is that you, Trevor May? Yeah. Well, surprise, surprise, it's still here. What? <laughs> Trevor, I've... Oh, Trevor. <laughs> Who's in your house tonight? Sorry? Who are you with tonight in your house, Trevor? The old family. The old family? Well, your wife, Margaret, tells me that you are a frustrated magician. Is that right? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, she tells me that, you magish. Is that right? Yeah. Well, how long have you been doing magic, Chuck? Um, since I was about six. Oh, I think you've been doing it much earlier than that. We've got a lovely picture of you here as a baby. Oh. Ah. Where even... the hell did you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> from your dear wife, Margaret. And looking by that, judging by that photograph, I mean, you were still little fingers up the sleeve there. You still had something up your sleeve from an early age, is that right? <laughs> Speak to me, Chuck. Yes, I, I, I just 
gobsmacked, as you call it. <laughs> you certainly are gobsmacked. And your wife, Margaret, I know an awful lot about you. She says you talk about magic all day long and all night. Now, what's so special about magic? Come on, sweetheart, tell me. Well, it's interesting. It's, uh, if you see somebody do it on the television, it's interesting to try and work out how they've done it. <laughs> what, all that noise in the background? <laughs> I'll tell you, Trevor, you're actually on the television now. What? <laughs> oh, yes, you are. And another thing, let's get back to your magic, because Margaret tells me you practice an awful lot in front of the mirror. Oh, yes, yes, I do. In fact, to use your Margaret's words, she says, he's always playing with something in front of the lounge mirror. <laughs> Your favourite trick, your speciality is the, the hollow elbow, is that right? Uh, yes, it's more of a kid's trick, but you'd be surprised how many adults that I can confuse with the hollow elbow. Ah, oh, well... Little Alf taught me that at the club. Well, Trevor, surprise, surprise, I want you to confuse grown-ups and children alike on next week's show, and surprise, surprise, will you do that with your hollow elbow trick? Not on television, surely. <laughs> oh, yes! You don't have to do it in front of a mirror anymore. You can do it in front of millions, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, I've been well and truly stitched up tonight, haven't I? <laughs> yes, you have. Now, the burning question is, are you going to come on the show next week? Next week? Yes. <laughs> yeah, OK, then. Oh, uh, any, anything for a, for a laugh? Yeah, so I'm going to be good. <laughs> uh, make, make sure you have a bottle of brandy there, won't you? <laughs> we'll have anything you like. After the show. After the show. After the show. But oh, before, right. you know, you've got to have, you know, your elbow steady to do the disappearing trick. Now, tell me, what are you going to say to your wife, Margaret, when you put this bone down from me? We kill her. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't kill her before next. You bring her along to the show as well. Will you do that? I never thought this would happen, ever happen to me. Oh, well, so... They're rot... They're... Make <laughs> it clean, Trevor. Uh, so I'll get my own back with the beavers about. Oh, you were... <laughs> well, you're coming on surprise, surprise next week, and we look forward to it. All right, Trevor? Thank you very much, Silla. Ta-ra, then. Yeah. Bye for now. Ta-ra for now. Ta-ra. And now it's time to meet another man with a couple of surprises up his sleeve. Yes, it's our very own Gordon Burns. Gordon. Who is looking for who this week? Well, the first story uh, we begin with is a very good example of the great British entrepreneurial spirit. Back in the 1930s, school friends Bernard King and Douglas Cater from Epsom would scar the local golf course for lost balls and sell them back to the golfers. <laughs> Indeed, business was going with a swing until, I suppose you could say, a birdie came along in the shape of 14-year-old Joyce Hawkins from Chessington. She and Bernard began courting, and the golf ball business was bunkered. They became inseparable, not just Joyce and Bernard, but Joyce, Bernard, and Douglas. It seems that everywhere the happy couple went, Douglas went too. And that would even have continued all the way up to the altar, but alas, Douglas was prevented from being the best man for the wedding in April 1942 by the RAF, who had posted him off to Canada for pilot training. The newlyweds, Joyce and Bernard King, went to live in Hanwell, Middlesex, and didn't see Douglas again until 1945. Later, Joyce and Bernard moved to Farnborough and completely lost touch with Douglas. But he'd been such a happy part of their lives that they named their son after him. Sadly, seven years ago, Bernard died, but Joyce still remembers the old days, and Douglas Cater in particular. So Douglas, former close friend of Joyce and Bernard King, if you're watching, please call us and make Joyce's day. Now, sit up straight, arms folded, and listen carefully, because it's back to school next. Uh, for me, that's a long time ago, but for Vicky Archer, it's just 1977. Here's her class at Atwell School in Birmingham when she was five. Vicky's the blonde who is circled on the left, and the other one we featured is her freckly-faced friend, Susan Lane. And she's the person we're trying to find. Now, of course, about 18 years old. 
Vicky and Jane first became friends when they were at nursery school, age three. But in 1979, Vicky's family moved to Dunstable in Bedfordshire, and although Susan did visit for a week and apparently had a super time, contact was lost about two years later when Vicky's letters suddenly weren't answered anymore. The last address Vicky had for Susan was 11 College Street, Hockley, Birmingham. Well, ten years have passed and Vicky's now at Art College, but she's still very keen to find Susan again. So Susan Lane, once of Atwell School in Birmingham, please contact us because there's a lot of catching up to do. Now, from out of Africa, or to be more precise, Nigeria, we've heard from Olatunji Okuboyejo. Tunji for short, thank goodness. He told us that he was born in Britain in 1964 and spent the first five years of his life with Kathleen and Ernest Taylor and their three daughters in Hartford North. Here he is at six months old with Kathleen. Tunji's parents lived and worked in London, but they visited him frequently. However, in 1969, they all returned to Nigeria and lost touch with the Taylors. Tunji has very fond memories of his time with Kathleen and Ernest and has tried to trace them through a friend in England. But so far, all he's managed to discover is that they are believed to have moved to Peterborough. Now, Tunji is getting married in August and would love to re-establish contact before then. So, Kathleen and Ernest Taylor, please call us. Could be a wedding invitation on the way. Finally, Pam Collard from Berry in Lancashire. Would love to get in touch with Lance Corporal Norman Butterworth, who's also from Berry. He's an old army friend of her father, Frank Woods, and served with the Welsh Regiment in Holland during the war. Norman last visited Pam's family in 1945. So, here's the search line number if you can help with any of tonight's stories. 071... 222-8070. Well, I should be back later with more research line, but right now it's back to soon. Thanks a lot, Gordon. See you later. All right, love. And you've just heard that last item from Gordon was on behalf of Pam Collard, who is actually sitting in our audience tonight. Where are you, Pam, sweetheart? Give us a wave. Well, Pam, I have to tell you, a marvellous coincidence. We had a letter about, oh, about maybe two or three weeks ago from another Collard. A Denise Collard. Now, I think she's your daughter, is that right? Yeah. Well, I think you better come down here. I'll explain more fully. Come and join me, please, Pam. I do certainly hope, welcome to Surprise Surprise, I certainly hope you get in touch with your dad's old army pal. But isn't that strange, your daughter Denise writing to us as well. I mean, it's got nothing to do with the old army pal, but in some ways it's very, very well connected. She writes and tells me that, ooh, way back in 1944, in fact, your, your father was killed in action, wasn't he? Yeah. And uh, you were, well, you were very young at the time. How old were you? Four Just months. a baby. Four months. Four months old. Yeah. And I know your mother wanted to bring your dad home for a proper burial in England, but money was very, very tight then. Mm -hmm. And in actual fact, he was buried in the war graves in, in Holland. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But she really was desperate to find out where, and she happened to get in touch with a lady in Holland by the name of, well, we both know the name, Toos Koonin mm -hmm. or Kernin. And in fact, Toos not only found your father's grave, but she also tended it and looked after it. And Denise tells me that all over these years, you've often wanted to go over to Holland to thank to Toos right. for all the hard work she's put into looking after your dad's grave. Well, surprise, surprise. Toos here tonight. We found her. And you can thank her in person. Here she is. Come in, Toos. Are you happy now? Yes. Oh, yes. Fabulous. oh isn't that yes. lovely? Yes. Oh, it's super. This is two in person. I'm so yes. pleased for you. Yes. We're going to take a break right now, yes. but we'll be back with I more surprises. Me. See you in a couple of yes. minutes. Yes. Yes. You
welcome back. Now, I've had a letter from Arthur and Eileen Slater telling me all about the multi-talented Fred Pring, who lives in Woking. Now, Fred has spent most of his life entertaining others. He's a semi-professional musician, singer and ventriloquist. And for many years, he organised and judged talent shows for young entertainers. Now, he's well known in the area as MC for the Young Stars. That's a road show Fred started on about 20 years ago. Now, over the years, the young stars and Fred have often performed at local old folks' homes and raised a lot, a lot of money for cancer research. Well, now it's Fred's turn to be entertained. And less than an hour ago, our Bob Calgies went off to Woking to give Fred the surprise of his life. Well, sir, I'm standing outside the Goldwater Lodge in Woking. Fred actually thinks he's coming here to have his photograph taken with the commemorative plaque he made for a friend. But he's wrong. Hello, Fred. Undo your belt. Come out here a minute. Is this Fred Pring? That's him. <laughs> Come here, Fred. We know it is. <laughs> oh, well, surprise, surprise, Fred. Surprise, surprise. How are you? Come round here, mate. Now stand here a minute. I want to tell you something. Come here. How are you? Surprise, surprise. Now, let me tell you, your, your friends, you think you're coming to have a photograph taken, will you not? That's right. You see, your friends, Arthur and Eileen Slater, wrote and told us all about you. You've been an entertainer for a long time, haven't you? That's right. And they told us that for over 40 years you've been entertaining in some of the old folks' homes around yes. here, bringing a lot of pleasure to everybody and raising loads of money for charity. Yes. Well, Fred, tonight is your night to be entertained. No, who's this bloke? He's the cameraman. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> and the same one. Because the waiting inside is a huge celebration night just for you. Oh, lovely. Is that all right? Yes. So come on, what are yeah. we waiting for? God. Let's get on with it. later to see how Fred reacts to the surprises we've got in store for him but right now it's time to welcome back our lovely Gordon Burns with another Searchline. Now Gordon have we had many successes on Searchline yet? Yes indeed uh, lots and lots the response uh, as always has been fantastic uh, too many to go through them all but for example we found bridesmaids Winifred and Joan Ling and I'm sure you'll particularly remember a personal appeal by Harry Dobson looking for his ex-army pal George Donegan remember they only had one civilian shirt between them well we found George so I should think he'll be returning the shirt to Harry any day now <laughs> hope he washed it and let's also hope we have as much success with tonight's personal appeal. It's made by Brian Hill from Cornwall, who's looking for his father, Frederick Sidney Hill. Brian's father and mother, Phyllis, lived in Dartmouth in the mid to late 1940s, but when Brian was 22 months old, sadly, his mum died from polio. In 1951, his father, Fred, rejoined the army. Brian now takes up the story. I know, obviously, that he returned to the army, and... I believe that he returned to the army because he just couldn't cope with the fact that he had lost his wife, which was my mother. And he placed me in the care of my grandparents. We do know that he eventually ended up in Malaya. Um, the records we have start around about 1951, which at the time he was in the 27th company RASC. Um, the latest records we have of him is when it progressed to the 52 company, which is around about 1953. And during that time in the army, he did come home to see you a couple of times, didn't he? He did, yes. Um, I can go back approximately to between four and five years old. Um, there's something sticks in my mind at the time that he took me about four miles on a tricycle. He then went back to Malaya, and a couple of years later, round about, I was about seven years old, he came home again on leave. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that was the last that I can remember of him. That was in 1955, by which time he'd become a sergeant, but you have absolutely no idea now where he is. I've no idea at all. Now, there is a hint that he might have remarried, I gather. There is. Um, nothing can confirm it. Um, alas, my grandparents who brought me up have, have passed on. But there is no confirmation of it from them or any other source. And clearly, you'd very much like to get in contact with him again. You obviously still think a lot about him. I think a lot of him. Um, even if it was last at seven years of age. 
Um, I can fully understand the reasons of why he rejoined the army. And I would desperately like to trace him and perhaps uh, build a relationship. Well, let's hope uh, that we find him. Now we've time for a couple of quickies. We'd like to get in touch with Leslie Dismore, whose last known address was 5 Gilbert Grove, Edgware, Middlesex, and also Philip Conrad Nags, thought to be in the Blythe area of Newcastle. So if they or indeed any of the people we've mentioned tonight are watching, please ring us here at Searchline on 071 222 8070 before 10 o'clock tonight, or write to Searchline, surprise, surprise, London Weekend Television, South Bank TV Centre, London, SE 996 YW. And if you do, it'll help us keep our search line success rate as high as ever, which is what we want, is it not? Indeed we do, Gordon. Thanks a lot. We shall see you next week. I shall be here. Thanks course. a lot. See you then. Well, now it's on to Granny Vera Andrews. Now, she's someone who believes her boots were certainly made for walking because last year she set off on a 7,000-mile walk around Britain to raise money for charity. She was sponsored by British Gas and kept to her schedule in spite of rain, snow and occasionally the blazing sun. She started off at 8 every morning and stopped when it got dark. She walked all on her own with a 30 pound rucksack and a ton of courage. Vera has many admirers including Brian Petz who wrote to me asking if I'd meet up with her and give her a bit of encouragement. Well off I set to give Vera a surprise on her marathon. Vera! Vera! Surprise! Surprise! Oh, no! Vera, <laughs> 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 you're right, too. Yeah, I can't believe it. Why can't you believe it? All <laughs> 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 these women. Well, you should have met many people on your travels because you are a very footloose and fancy free person, aren't I you? I am, yeah. In fact, for almost 12 months, you've nearly covered nearly 7,000 miles, haven't you, That's children? right, I have. How many miles do you walk a day? Um, averaging about 20 miles now, and 26 just a marathon a day in the summer. Oh, isn't that lovely? Well, we all think you're brilliant, because you do this all in a very dear cause to your heart. You raise thousands and thousands of pounds for hospices all over the country, That's don't right. you, children? For every local hospice in the country will benefit from the walk. Oh, well, for all this, we think you are gorgeous, and that's why I'm here today to deliver you a syllogram. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> yes, and are you wondering at all how I heard about your marvellous work? Oh, yes, it, it's sort of... Yes, it is. <laughs> it's worrying me. <laughs> it well, do you know anybody by the name of Mr. Petz? Yes, I do. Well, he's yes, surprise, okay. surprise, he's here today. Oh, Come in, Chuck. Here he is. Oh, oh look at that. Hello. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> no. It's all his fault. He wrote and told us of all your great work. I'll get at him afterwards. <laughs> well, all we've got to do is get our coats on, get me boots on, and we're going to walk and take the scenic route. Wonderful. All right, and the scenic route is this way. Come on, Chuck. Come on. Come on.
first Jeanette beat in the studio, and I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that Vera actually broke her own record. She walked 7,350 miles and helped to raise over 100,000 pounds for charity. Well done, Vera. Keep up the good work. to whiz over to our outside broadcast cameras at Woking and join our Bob live to see how Fred's enjoying his surprise night out so far. Are you there, Bob? Yes, I'm certainly here, Stella, and we're poised for what could be quite a hectic night here tonight. But first of all, <laughs> first of all, could I introduce you to our guest, our special, very special guest, Mr. Fred Bring. Oh, look at that. Hello, Fred. Hello, Silla. <laughs> <laughs> the entrepreneur that you are. You look ever so professional standing there, Fred. Do I? You certainly do. Well, I've do. had half hour training out there. <laughs> now, have you gotten over the shock of our Bob surprising you? Not really. I was a bit rude to him, I think. <laughs> you weren't rude. You act as normal surprise persons do. And they haven't stopped having these surprises yet, Bob. You've got lots more for him. Absolutely right, sir. And to join in the celebration uh, tonight, we've got sex of faces, actually, that Fred will be very familiar with. Um, we're starting very close to home, Fred. And uh, first of all, here's your daughter, Diane. Come and say hello. Oh, look at that. <laughs> We've also got uh, your granddaughter Fiona and her father Tony. <gasps> Hello. Where am I going? Hello. Hello. <laughs> and your brother in law Bill Jones and sister in law Joan Spring. <gasps> Pretty <good. laughs> Hello, Bill. Hey, Hello. What's your name? Your brother. <laughs> God. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Always calls me brother. <laughs> and, of course, and of course, the people you've got to either thank or blame for tonight, your very good friends, Arthur and Eileen Slater. They're no friends of mine. <laughs> yeah. Hello, dear. Hello, dear. Hello, dear. Hello, darling. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? And I believe... Super Silla, super. Super Silla. <laughs> Sounds like a petrol to me. That's super right. Silla. <laughs> There's lots more to come yet, isn't that right, there Bob? There certainly is. Actually, Fred, I want to take you back in time just to, to just after the end of the Second World War when you used to play with the hillbilly band Leon Neller and That's his right. novelaires. That's right. Well, what, what on earth is Leon Neller? That's well, a, a, Leon Neller was Noel Allen backwards. Noel Allen ran the uh, little hillbillies oh, in Hawaiian. To, and you used to play in the group? I used to sing in the group. And how long ago was that? Forty years ago. Forty years. You haven't seen it for forty years. Noel, come in. I meet your old friend, Fred, for it. Oh, Fred, look at Silla now. Look at Silla now. Hello, Noel. I've, I've got a little surprise for you. I met Noel earlier. Yeah. Yes, I've been practicing. Did he do your hair for you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a hairdresser. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Noel. Well, he's obviously amazed that he saw you after such a long time. You must have a lot of stories Silla, to tell I've about. I've been looking for him for two years. It's have my you? cue Does now. Does he owe you money? It's my cue now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the camp we went to? In Borden. Yeah, Crookham. Borden Crookham. 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 Crookham as well. Where the uh, Dutch government and their army were leaving England. Do you remember? Yes, Everybody had a lovely yes. bottle of champagne. Whatever it was, yes, whatever yes. it was. <laughs> and we were the only two that were sober. sober. That's right. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you something. I won't make sure, I'll make sure it's, it won't happen tonight. No. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Isn't that lovely? You can have a chat with him later on. But anyway, the studio have got to leave us right now. We're going to carry on with surprises for you. So we'll see you shortly, Silla. We certainly will. I yeah. shall look forward to that, Fred. All right. Goodbye, Silla. See, no, not goodbye. See you later. Yes, OK. All right, love. Ta-ra, then. Ta-ra. seeing Bob and Fred again, we'll have some old-fashioned harmony singing from a barbershop chorus, and somebody sitting in our audience tonight is going to have a fabulous surprise. So see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Well, I hear it's all been happening to Fred over in Woking, so let's join our Bob to find out what exactly has been going on. Over to you, Bob. Well, Silly, we've really turned the clock back for Fred here. With uh, We've introduced to him many of the 
stars of his uh, road show, old and young, old stars and new ones. And here they are. I say hello to Cilla. Look at us. Hello. Well, our audience will say, ah, oh, look at the sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, Bob, Bob. Don't they look cute? Bob, doesn't it make you want to have another? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have been busy, though, since we've been away in the break, Bob. Yes, and we're going to uh, actually end our surprises now, Silla, with someone who has enjoyed uh, many of Fred's performances uh, over the years, when she was warden of the Pond Court Sheltered Housing, Fred. One of, that was one of Fred's regular venues, remember playing that? Pound Court. Pound Court? Pound Court. Oh, sorry if I speak. Oh, I should think so. Pound Court. Pound Court. <laughs> She's retired now, actually, but I think you'll remember her. She's made the journey here tonight to join in the celebration. Surprise, surprise. It's Vera Pritchard. Yes. Well done, Vera. Hello, Vera. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. Uh, Hello. 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 Oh, how, well done, Vera. How many shows do you actually see? How many did I see? Mm. Oh, at least a dozen, I should think. Loads of them. It's just to as good. Thank a... Fred publicly for all the joy that he brought to the residents of Pound Court. Ah. Great fun. Thanks, Fred. Oh, lovely. isn't that well, nice? Thank you, Vera. Oh, that's lovely. Fred, you must be feeling very proud tonight, are you, Chuck? Didn't hear that, Silla. You're feeling very proud tonight, Fred? Yes, I certainly am. Yes, lots of friends, I hope. <laughs> well, they're all your friends. Actually, we've one more surprise for you, actually. You're not here, are you? <laughs> You can hear my voice, but I'm not behind those screens or anything. But somebody very special is. Have a listen to this voice and see if you can recognise it. Hey, Fred, 16 years ago, I was in your road show and you gave me my big break. I came down to Woking Football Club and did uh, a small spot there for you and upset the mayoress with my cheeky impressions of Frank Spencer. Ooh, Bobby <laughs> Dabro. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, big thing he starts. Ago, that was, believe it or not, 16 years ago, and he's always been a real character, Silla. And that story I was telling you about, when I when he asked me to come along to Woking Football Club, there was all the mayoress and the mayor was there, and I upset them with my impression of Frank Spencer because I remember that one of the jokes I told, it was all oh, Betty, I've had a bit of trouble. <laughs> Still do this, Jack. Oh, Betty, I've had a bit of trouble. I've got a bit of soap stuck up my bottom. <laughs> and then he said, Oh, that's life, boy. <laughs> Oh, oh, actually, it's lovely to see you on the show as well, Bobby Davro. It's lovely. Can you hear me, Bobby? I can hear. I can hear you, fella. <laughs> you always, you always worry about me when I come on, don't you? Because you always feel I'm going to actually do the impression of you, and I, and you said you'll, you never have the nerve to do it in front of you. Well, surprise, surprise! <laughs> Thanks to Bobby Davro there. Bobby, I've only one word to say to you. You wicked. <laughs> <laughs> lovely with it. Fred, have you enjoyed your evening? Yes, lovely. And we've got one little surprise for you as well. Not another one. Yes. <laughs> oh, you've seen fed up, Chuck. Are you fed, no, up? fed up? No, I don't think this will stand it. <laughs> no, no, it will stand it. But this is a nice one because all your performance tonight, and especially Bobby here, I think... Bobby Davros and Marv's the icing on the cake for you, I think. We've videoed the whole show for you, so you can take it home and watch it to your heart's content. Oh, Is that all right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We let you carry on with your celebrations, Fred, all right? She, she's for Fred. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Well, everyone's got a lot to talk about here, Silla, so see you next week for a moment. Yes. Have a drink on me, all right, gang? Cheers, Silla. Yeah. Tra then. Tra Bobby. Tra Fred. Do I really sound like that? No. <laughs> Ooh, you little liars. <laughs> Last week, if you remember, I phoned pest controller Nick Frampton. Now, when he's not out killing cockroaches, rats and various other pests, Nick is the musical director of White Harmony. That's a barbershop chorus. Now, we invited Nick and his group to come and give us a burst of their close harmony, and here they are. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Nick Frampton and White Harmony! <laughs> oh, no way. 
Oh, what a fine figure of a man you are, then. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Actually, you don't look anything like a pest control. I mean, you look as if you wouldn't even hurt a fly, never no. mind a rat. It's, it's very difficult. That's what you do I, for a living? I shed tears sometimes over do... it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what a shame. Well, you do a very worthwhile job. And you're going to do a worthwhile job tonight because you're going to sing for us. We certainly are. By the way, what song are you going to sing? We're going to sing a song called Whatever Happened to Mary. Do you know it? <laughs> In a word, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, what we decided to do, we're going to do our own special version of it. Guess... Super! And we and... altered the title. Yes. And guess what it's going to be? I can't think. Well, surprise, surprise. Oh. It's Whatever Happened to Scylla. <laughs> Job, you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Well, that, that yeah. sounds very charming. And we've to got me. another surprise for you as well. Oh, no, not another yeah, one. We'd like you to help us with the song. Oh, but I'm sorry. I don't know whatever happened to Mary or no. Scylla or whoever, Aggie from the Baggy. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> you'll, you'll know this story. It's a lovely story about a lovely lady. And all you have to do is just listen to the story and just act it out. Oh, yes. Sounds easy. It's as clear as mud to me. <laughs> well, I said I could do it when I wrote him for the job. <laughs> All right, you start. Great. And I'll act. Yeah. Whatever happened to Silla, the girl with the bashful smile? She never walked with the boys in the park or cuddled for a little while. Silla would never go near. Say was no. <laughs> An old-fashioned girl was still. What could have changed her so? Silver always was so very shy when guys would wink their eyes. Big, big hand for our Nick and White Harmony. Thanks a lot, lads. That was absolutely Thank sweet. You. Well, now, let me tell you about a super lady sitting right here in our audience tonight. She has six children, and she's virtually brought them up all on her own. Yes, surprise, surprise. It's you, Shirley Reed. Where are you, Shirley? Shirley, give us a wave. Come and join me, please, Shirley. Shirley, have a seat. 
deep down there. Come and sit close to me, love. Oh, a bit further to Scylla. <laughs> oh, I had a lovely letter. I must tell you, a gorgeous letter from your son, Tim, sitting up there. He wrote and told me all about you. Now, I've already mentioned you've brought up six children, mm -hmm. virtually all mm -hmm. on your own. Is that right? Yes. And he wrote a marvellously glowing letter about you, saying that you've really given up everything for your children. And 12 years ago, your husband died, and that was when, that was when you really got quite a, a good executive job. That's right, yes. But you still thought of all your kids, the six of them. You've helped them financially, emotionally. And Tim says that you've literally done everything for them. Now, even all through all those years of bringing all your six children up, You've had one longing, well, a couple of longings, actually. You did actually, you've got two brothers, haven't you? You've three got together. Three brothers, yes. but you've got two brothers, one that lives in Canada. Yes. And you've one. got another brother living New in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Now, you saved up enough money to go and visit your brother in Canada. That's right, You're Richard. Yes. You saw him. Mm -hmm. But Tim tells me that it's an impossible dream for you to save up to go and see your other brother, Peter in New Zealand. That's right. Well, until I retire, perhaps. Until you retire? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Shirley, you don't have to retire because, surprise, surprise, we have brought your brother Peter all the way from New Zealand to see you here tonight. Here he is. Come in, Peter, sweetheart. Say hello. <laughs> Come and sit down. Come and sit next to us. You sit next to me, Shirley. <laughs> and there's Peter there, all the way from New Zealand. And don't they look alike, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Absolutely. Now tell us how long. I'll tell you because you ever so, you're shaking, aren't you? I am. It's it's nearly 40 years since you've seen each other, isn't it? Yes. 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 You must be getting on that way. Yes. And what about, I know you've, you've, you've seen your brother Richard yes. in Canada, but yes. what about you, Peter? How yeah. long is it since you've seen your Richard in Canada? Forty years. Forty years. Mm -hmm. Well, surprise, surprise, you're going <laughs> to see him tonight as well. He's travelled all the way from Canada, isn't this lovely Shirley? Come in, Richard! <laughs> The more the world is changing, the more it stays the same. Life is full of small surprises. It's a never end. The clock says it's time to go again. And I'd like to say a very big thank you to everyone who's taken part in tonight's show, especially our Gordon Burns and the lovely Bob Cowell, please. We'll be back at the same time next week with lots more surprises. So until then, ta then. ta <laughs>
surprise, surprise, returns to our screens at the same time.